Hello Nippies, welcome back to the channel. And if you're new here, hi, hello, I'm Nips, a freelance artist. And today we're gonna be working on this corpse husband drawing. You guys probably know who Corpse Husband is, and if you don't, they are a musician online, pretty popular. They're known for their, you know, deep voice. They've got this cool, like, skull rabbit persona thing on their face. I think they do occasionally stream and have, like, a YouTube channel or something. But yeah, I've always seen their persona online, and I always thought it was really cool, and I really wanted to try drawing it. That is why I did this. And so I don't really know that much about them, so hopefully I don't anger anyone with this drawing <laughs> if I got anything inaccurate But if this is something that you guys want to watch I'm gonna break down the layers as well after the speed paint go ahead keep watching and hope you guys enjoy all right, so I'm gonna go ahead and go over the speed paint. Now, the problem with this one is that the camera angle and the lighting looks really washed out and glary on this. So what I'm gonna do is put it over there on the side so you guys can see both at the same time. So I'm gonna go ahead and start up the speed paint now. Time-lapse replay. Now, the first thing that I did was get a corpse husband to, um, reference and and when I first started this sketch, ideally, I wanted to actually draw a corpse waifu. Now, not necessarily a gender bend, but just like an alternate version of a corpse do like a, my idea of a corpse waifu. And um, I don't know, I just decided to change it because I wasn't entirely sure on if that was going to be problematic or not. So I decided to just kind of put it on the side. But let me know what you think down below because I still really want to do a corpse waifu. I think it'd be a cool idea. Now, I feel like this pose is pretty basic for what I wanted. I wanted something a little bit more like fish eye lens and more in your face and dynamic, but it ended up being kind of plain and it just looks like a very basic far away shot, which there's nothing wrong with, but I think when I say these things, when I say like basic and like simple and like not dynamic, I'm more so speaking of like the comparison of like how it would have looked if it had executed like I thought about it in my head. So yeah, so I wanted something a little bit more interactive where you felt like you you were inside the drawing and it just kind of did not come out that way. I had a lot of fun drawing his, um, I had to go on, on TikTok to go check some of his rings. He has like these like skeleton rings there and I didn't chip his, his nails, which I totally forgot to do. I decided to just make these up here. I gave him some chains. I found some bracelets on, on TikTok and stuff. So here I'm kind of just uh, grappling with the kind of lines that I really want for this. Like, do I want to keep it simple or do I want to kind of go more in depth? And at this point, because of this area here, I almost kind of felt like I had to go a little bit more in depth. Like I couldn't really keep it that simple. And so I started kind of panicking a bit because I didn't want to add too many details to the chains down here and everything else. I kind of wanted to not take that much time on this, which I really didn't. I think I took like, uh, I want to say like three hours maybe on this. So I tried to like scribble in some chains as opposed to adding too much detail. I added in the bracelet, the other rings. Now this back, um, the colors in the back were just like a, a color sample because I wanted to see what it would look like beforehand. I was having trouble doing the lines and so I created some silhouettes with the color. And originally I wanted to do this like orange like sun thing because the space was a little bit dead. And I honestly, I like I took it out and I ended up not doing anything with it. But I also originally this was gonna have backlighting as opposed to lighting from the top. But I always do backlighting and I think for this one, it was gonna be fun to do like the shadow over his eyes and so I decided to just go with a uh, top lighting instead I went with a really brushy kind of uh, strokey brush for the highlights and that was that was really fun I actually really like how that looks I was kind of struggling with this to make it look finished I felt like it was just too basic like I I didn't know how to finish this drawing um, so I just kind of kept doing things to it just adding highlights adding overlays and um, funky layer effects, changing up the brushes. 
I honestly was kind of at a loss for how to proceed with this drawing. I added some background lighting and I made it choppy. I was gonna add a glitch and that didn't really look quite right. So I took that off, but in the end, it kind of turned out pretty cool. It did really well on Twitter, so thank you for that. I really do appreciate everyone that liked and shared it. Yeah, so that's pretty much the process. Maybe I'll go over all the layers and kind of the arrangement and everything in a sec. Yeah. So I'm actually going to go through the layers really quick. So this piece is a pretty good example of what I do for my sketches, just like fast um, doodles. And so I figured I'd go through all the steps. So I'm gonna go ahead and hide everything that isn't the background. I don't know if it's because it's visible, I'm not allowed to do that. So if you press, if you just leave it pressed, it'll hide everything, there we go. So I'm gonna start off with the sketch. So the first sketches that I did, so this is the first sketch. This is when I was starting to think about corpse waifu and then I just immediately discarded the idea and then went with uh, this one. Now it's really, really, really messy as you can see but the idea is there. Usually when I do my sketches, a lot of the times, not only do they look messy, they don't look how the finished product is going to look. It's more so for me, I need a good indication of like composition and like layers and dimension. I think that's like my, my biggest thing when I do sketches is I need to know where things are gonna be, how they're gonna flow, and what space they're gonna take on the page, which is kind of like composition, but kind of like, I don't know, like space in the sense of like dimension, which I'm not very good at, but <laughs> I need it. And so this was a pretty good indicator for me. I had this um, other sketch, I think. Yeah, so this, I, I had this other sketch up here too to kind of fix the, the bottom sketch. So sometimes I'll have multiple sketch layers. Um, those of you that have seen me stream, you guys know I'll have S, S1, S2, and I'll name it like that consecutively on the iPad. If I'm doodling like this, I really don't name them, but it's the same concept where I'll have like multiple sketch layers and I'll like continue to fix them one on top of the other until I get something that I'm pretty much comfortable with. And so then we're gonna make quite a big jump here into the line art right here. There we go. So we've come up with our finished line art here. Now, before I did this, actually, I should probably show you that I did um, a color sample right here. So I had originally done something like this to better understand where I wanted things to go. I usually will set the sketch layer to multiply so I can do this so that it doesn't look all blue like that or whatever color I'm using in the moment. So I did this to kind of just see how it would look if I were to actually fill it in because sometimes the sketch doesn't always convince me or I don't know where to put certain shapes so I just do silhouettes, color silhouettes instead. That's pretty much what that is. And then once I felt comfortable with that, then I went ahead and did the lines. And um, normally when I do lines, I have a lot of people ask me what brushes I use. I have a set of favorite brushes that are basically just all the brushes that I really like. And this, this list grows all the time. And I edit these to my own liking. But if you use Procreate, these are pretty much the ones that I use a lot. These are just copies of the default brushes and then I tweak them to either how I'm feeling that day or just um, a specific type of use that I wanted to have. So these are the brushes that I use. I use a lot um, to do line art. I use chalk and shale a lot. After I do that, I typically will do my flats. So I'll fill it in, I'll block out the, the areas now, my layer optimization on Procreate is probably not the best. There are so many cool hacks on Procreate that I have not entirely explored. And so if you're seeing this and you're really good at optimizing your Procreate layers, I am sorry. This is just how I do them right now but I do intend on learning more about Procreate and hopefully optimizing this because this is probably really messy. On top of that, this is just a doodle. So sometimes when I do these like really fast doodles, I don't really care about how my layers are arranged as long as it the job gets done. And so I'll have this layer, I'll alpha lock it so I can't, you know, color outside of it. And then I'll start adding clipping masks 
that just attach to the bottom layer. And then I'll start adding the, the colors here. You'll see like that, the grays and the purples, the eyes, the hair, some glow. And then a second layer, like a, a detailed, a detailed multiply layer. So for the, the detailed shadows, and then I'll add a general light layer. So I, I usually have like two or three multiply layers to kind of add different dimensions of shadows. Now the multiply, this general multiply layer, I have it set as a mask because most of the time I do gradients. I like to do gradients and if you do gradients directly on the layer without a mask, at least for me, you kind of have to tweak the colors. Like it's not gonna be a smooth gradient. So if you don't really know what uh, layer masks are, you pretty much, it's like a neutral layer where you pick the area of the canvas that you want whatever you put um, in Procreate's case, whatever you put under it to cover. So that way, if you do a gradient, you can choose in the mask layer what areas that gradient is going to cover without messing up the gradient, if that makes any sense. So I, uh, it's a lot more organized on Photoshop. Obviously Procreate is uh, not a super, super intricate like program like Photoshop, but it's getting there because Procreate does offer a lot of things that Photoshop also offers and then some that Photoshop does not offer. So we're getting there. Then once I do that, I will typically wash it with like uh, the background with just like a solid color or something that I think is going to be more or less the mood of the drawing. Um, I'll also multiply not multiply, duplicate, sorry, the line art layer. And then I'll set it to color burn. I'll blur it a little bit and then set it to color burn and give it like a really satch, fill the layer with a very saturated color. In this case, I think I used orange just to kind of give the lines a little bit more pop and dimension. I don't always do it. There are some drawings where it doesn't really look that good. Then I went ahead, added some borders. You'll see here, I added some like, you know, just to, separate certain dimensional planes on the drawing. And then I went ahead and this is my screen layer. I don't always do highlights on screen. Sometimes I do it on linear light, which is usually when I do uh, rim lighting, or sometimes I'll do it on um, vivid light. It, it really depends, overlay, it's it's whatever whatever I'm feeling in the moment. Then I did a mask. This one is not very obvious, uh, I did a gradient map, not a mask, sorry. I did a gradient map. And if I show you here, we can set it to normal. So that way you guys can see what it looks like. So I have some, some of the default Procreate gradient maps. Um, I like doing this because I think I've said this in other videos, I'm pretty bad at color picking. And so usually this gradient map feature will help me unify my drawing while adding a different spice to the color palette. So that's why, uh, that's why I have that there. And then we've got some extra highlights, screen layer. We've got the vivid light that I was experimenting with in the back that I ended up not liking. And then I added some extra black. Sometimes I'll just go over, like I'll continue adding layers on top of the lines and stuff. And so sometimes, and more so more so recently, I'll do this with like every piece. Um, I used to not do this all the time way back in the day, but now I, I do it pretty much all the time. I will merge everything. So you'll see here, um, I'm gonna go ahead and take all of this out so you guys can see. Usually I'll group this, but because this was a doodle, I was just kind of going, but normally I'll group all the layers. And then when I paste, the one layered version, the flattened version, I will have it on a separate folder. So I'll have like a merged folder is what I'll call this. And then I'll have like a layered folder. So where it's like all the original layers. And then I'll start painting on the finished merged layer and just finishing, adding like highlights, uh, finishing touches, color corrections, all of that stuff. I did some chromatic aberration. I actually really love that effect. I pretty much do it to like all my pieces. <laughs> um, so yeah, you just go here. I duplicate the layer. I go here and go to chromatic aberration and it gives us like really cool kind of like neon 3D glitchy effect if you tweak it right. And I just love the, the fact that it has. Now, this is the finished piece. I don't hate it. I think it looks pretty cool, um, but I definitely in my head thought it could have been much, much better. All 
right thank you guys so much for watching hopefully you guys enjoyed that video let me know what you guys thought in the comment section down below like subscribe join the nippy family go ahead and follow me everywhere on socials instagram twitter tiktok twitch at art by nips and hopefully i will see you guys next video bye